Hey everyone, welcome back to Dan's Chess Lounge. So today there was an interesting game played at the Tata Steel Chess Tournament. It was between Ian Nipo Niachi and Anish Giri. So let's go ahead and get into the game. Uh, Giri was white, Nipo was black. Giri played e4, d6, d4, knight f6. You have a pierce defense here. And it was sort of a surprise. Uh, that he played that, but in the post-round interview, Nipo said that most chess players now on the high level, they study a lot of uh, Sicilian Nidorfs, they study a lot of uh, Berlins and the Rui Lopez, but so he was hoping by playing the Pierce defense that it would kind of catch Gary off guard a little bit and he wouldn't be as prepared for it. So one thing that I do know though from playing the Pierce is that it's definitely a counter puncher's opening because you're going to get hit with a big attack and you need some strong nerves to be able to hang in there and uh, to, to survive it. But let's see what happens in this game here. Knight c3, g6, bishop e3, a6. a6 prepares black to go ahead and, and expand on the queen side with b5 and then potentially b4, which would remove the knight here, which is protecting the pawn there on e4. Queen d2, and then white's playing here. White wants to castle queen side, and then he's going to throw everything at the kitchen sink. You know, the bishop is going to go to h6 to attack the the potentially fin kettled bishop. Black's bishop usually goes to g7, and then you'll have h4, g4, g4, h5 it can be an all-out attack so that's why i say you need nerves to steal to be able to play the the pierce defense uh well these days b5 f3 and f3 there's just solidifies the pawn on e4 uh, if he was able to get b4 in now e4 is still protected knight bd7 developing queenside castle safety Knight b6, g4, there he goes, he's starting with his, his push, bishop b7, knight h3, knight fd7, black's doing some maneuvering here, bishop e2, e6 is a good flexible move here, bishop g5, attacks the queen, bishop e7 now normally the bishop goes to g7 but this is a good square for the bishop to go here uh to block the attack on his queen also it would be advantageous for black to maybe trade off uh some pieces here because if you look at his structure here he's a little cramped you know he he's he's lacking on space whereas white has plenty of space Queen e3. This was like a waiting move, sort of. Uh, it's almost like a wasted tempo, though. Bishop takes bishop. Knight takes. a6 kicks the knight. And now, if you look at the position here, queen h4 attacking the unprotected knight. Black is doing much better here. He has a little bit more room. Uh, the knight goes back to f2, and he castles. And black is absolutely fine here. He's he's got more more space because he he's doesn't have all the pieces that he's had. He was able to trade a piece off. Uh, his king has castled into safety, so he's doing just fine here. F4, Gary is taking more space. If you look at all the squares that these pawns occupy, like geez, you know. Gary is is really pushing his 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 side trying to cramp black. F5 bishop f3 and now you have b4 attacks the the knight there so the knight has a few squares that he can retreat to preferably knight b1 and in the game here Gary played e takes f5, and this is a peace sacrifice. He's saying to Nepo, go ahead, take my knight. And he, sure enough, he does. He takes it. b takes knight, 
And then Gary gobbles up that pawn on e6. C takes b2 check. And the king slides over here to b1. Now, if you're wondering why didn't the king take that pawn there, well, if he takes the pawn, then his king is going to be a little exposed. But more importantly than that, if he takes the pawn, then there's a tricky fork here. Knight c4 forks the queen and the, and the king. So that would be a costly mistake. Better than that, though, if we go back a few moves here, instead of the peace sacrifice, a better continuation would have been for Anish Giri to just play knight b1, right? The knight's under attack. So retreat the knight back to b1. Takes exchanges here. Bishops come off. And then Nepo would win the pawn ultimately on g4. So Anish would be down one pawn here, but the knight could always reroute back into the game here, knight b to d2, and it's still anyone's game. This is still a, a, a very uh, competitive game here. Instead, he went for this peace sacrifice with e takes f5, and at the end of the sacrifice, really, there's just this pawn here dangling on e6. And I think, I don't know for sure because I didn't see his post-round interview, I think he figured that maybe that pawn could get supported by one of his pawns here. And then this pawn would be a monster on e6. And it's only two squares away from promotion. So I'm thinking that he was thinking that that was going to be like a monster pawn, a monster thorn and black side for the rest of the game. And then it would have clearly been worth uh, that sacrifice then. But let's see what happened in the game. So bishop takes b7, check. King takes. Queen f3, check. D5. D5 is a great move here, and it really hurts White's uh, whole agenda because White wants wanted to play D5 himself and solidify that pawn there, but instead Black was able to play D5. And now, if you look at White's pawn here on E6, it's just kind of there all alone by itself. It's actually not a strength now. It's actually a target. And remember, he gave up a full piece for that. He gave up a knight for that pawn to, to land there on e6. So now you have knight d3, knight e4. This is a strong move which threatens a fork there on c3. So you have knight c5 check. And queen a3. This threatens uh, the, the queen to infiltrate black's position. It would be very, very dangerous for Black if he allowed that. So he swapped off that knight. And now you have queen takes c5, threatening the pawn on c7. And Nepo's king just scoots over. And at here, Anish Giri just went ahead and resigned at this point. Uh, he's a piece down. If you notice, the g-pawn over here is under attack. Um, this e-pawn here... It's going to fall once once Black turns his attention to it. He could just play Rook D6. He could slide the other Rook over to e, E8. He could bring the Queen back to F6. You know, he's going to have all these pieces targeting this, this E pawn. So he didn't feel like he had much to play for anymore. So he went ahead and resigned at this point. Um, just going forward, you may say, well... Why couldn't White go ahead and snap that pawn off on B2? If he does that, then he falls for a nasty fork again, forking the queen this time. So that was a, a interesting game. I need Gary kind of self-destructed, you know, which is he can't talk all that mess to Carlson and then play games like this because if it's one thing to say about Carlson, he he does. It's very rare that he self-destructs. 
So, like this game here. So, but after round one at the Tata Steel, Nepo and Vichy Anand were the only two winners today. So, they're in clear first um, at this point. Carlson's game, I encourage everyone to go and look at Magnus Carlson's game from today because it was very interesting. He actually got out of book after about four or five moves and they were just playing on their own. And he gave up two rooks today, both rooks. It was a, a double rook sacrifice in the game today. It was it was very, very interesting. So I encourage everyone to go check that game out uh, just for your own personal enjoyment. Okay, guys, stay tuned for round two. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. See you guys next time.